Hi folks, it's me again, Glenn, and I'm here to help you with the WebAssign. There are cases when you draw a Lewis structure and uh, you have to give an atom more than eight electrons. And there are cases when you have to give an atom less than eight electrons. So I mentioned to you the cases uh, in my previous video, which were hydrogen, and you can only give them two electrons, beryllium, uh, four electrons, and boron, six electrons. Now, uh, in the textbook, there is some evidence that you can give boron eight electrons in some cases, but this is a bit of an unusual case. Uh, usually, boron is going to end up with just the, 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 the six electrons around it, two, four, six. In this case, there is a pair of electrons that comes from nitrogen. It is not, this bond right here, this is not a traditional uh, covalent bond because in a traditional covalent bond, one of the electrons comes from one atom and the other electron comes from the other atom. But this one is, uh, we call this a coordinate covalent bond where both of the electrons are coming from one atom. So see, this is, this nitrogen, it has two electrons. It will... It has two electrons, and this boron has no um, ele no more electrons to share. So these guys just move in here, and they form this bond. Both of those electrons came from one atom. So this is a little unusual. But anyways, uh, the additional level of sophistication is for more than eight electrons, not less than eight electrons. This is called hypervalency in your textbook, in other books, and perhaps in the web assign. It is also known as um, the expanded octet or the extended octet. Uh, you won't have it in this number, but uh, you, I don't think you're going to have it in this number either, but uh, you are, you might have it right here. Yes, yes, right here. So, oh, you're, gonna, you're, you're definitely gonna have it right here. Here, uh, let me draw this one for you uh, to show you what I mean. Okay, actually, I'm going to draw both of them, the, the, the chlorine trioxide and the iodine heptafluoride for you. You're going to have different compounds, don't worry. Anything that's shown in red here, I believe, gets switched up at random by WebAssign. So you, we're not going to have the same problems um, as far as I know. All right, so um, let me get a new sheet of paper here. Uh, excuse me. So, I need to get your your iodine. The easier one is the iodine heptafluoride. Iodine heptafluoride. So you put that first one in the middle, and you surround it with the other one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If it's good, if it's nice and symmetrical. But if it's not, not to worry. No worries. All right. Okay. Now. Already, I could see that I've broken the first rule. This iodine in the middle, it has 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. It has 14 electrons around it. This is just not okay. But these fluorines still need to have 8 electrons around them. So uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, 7, 8. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three. <laughs> this is fun, huh? Six. Seven. Okay. So now I'm going to end up with uh, how many dots are there? That each each F has six dots, and there are seven Fs, so that's forty-two dots. Plus, uh, how many lines have I got? Each line is two electrons. So there are seven lines, so plus 14, that equals 56. It's 56 electrons, but how many electrons do I need? Well, this uh, I has seven valence electrons, plus this, these Fs, they also have seven valence electrons each. So this is going to be 49 plus 7, which is 56. All right, so this is the correct structure. 
is this allowed in nature? Yes, this is allowed in nature. And you will learn why this is allowed in the next module. By the way, when you look in your textbook, you're going to see these strange um, mathematical looking notations called electron configuration. Uh, please do not worry about those right now. We will learn about these electron configuration type things, and you will write electron configurations next week in the following module after this. All right? When we learn about electron configurations, you will start to understand why it's possible for some atoms to break this rule of having eight electrons around it. Okay? Now let me draw that chlorine trioxide, that ridiculous chlorine trioxide. I put Cl in the middle. Put O here, O here, and O here. There's a CL in the middle, all right? Okay, now I give everybody octet. So this chlorine has two, four, six, seven, eight. Oxygen has two, four, six, I'm sorry, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so there it is. Um, this is supposed to have seven valence electrons here, six valence electrons here, but there are three of those, so 18 plus seven. 18 plus seven is 25. So, looks like this is an odd number. That means I'm going to be missing electron. I'm, I'm going to be missing an electron somewhere. So, let's see. Uh, how many electrons have I got here? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. So I have 26 electrons here. Huh. Well, that's weird. Um, how, are we, how are we going to uh, take care of this? Let's consult the periodic table. I need to remove an electron from here somewhere. But the best place to remove an electron, I mean the most likely place where nature will let you have seven instead of eight valence electrons, is going to be on the guy who is the least electronegative. The guy who is the most electronegative here, he's not going to tolerate having seven electrons when he can just steal an electron from the next guy. So you need to find the guy here who, who is the least electronegative and then just erase an electron from him. So let's see. Chlorine is right here. Oxygen is right here. I know that oxygen is less electronegative than fluorine, but I know that chlorine is more electronegative than fluorine, so I'm going to have to use some real ele electronegativity chart, such as this one. Chlorine has an electronegativity of 3.0, oxygen 3.5. So oxygen is going to want all of its electrons. And chlorine, chlorine is going to be a little less uh, of a pain about that. All right? So let's let chlorine lose an electron. Uh, how do I do that? Uh, just eraser, I guess. No, I'm going to um, give this some white, uh, make it nice and wide. So, Mr. Chlorine, we're going to erase this electron. All right, so that's it. That's your structure. It is now 25 electrons. Oops. <laughs> I got to get the purple again. All right, so it is now, get this back to three. It is now 25 electrons. The, is the chlorine breaking the first rule? Yes, it is breaking the first rule, but there's nothing I can do about it. It, it must be the case that nature has this molecule that I mean this molecule exists in nature it may not exist for a long time but it exists does this really exist in nature huh this is so weird uh, so what is more common in nature is clo3 minus it looks like uh this right here clo3 minus and so with that extra minus you're going to have uh, 26 valence electrons, so we're going to keep that one. And there's 26 electrons. That's not what the, that's not what the Webassign problem is about, though. The Webassign problem is about uh, chlorine. No, no, yeah, chlorine trioxide, right? So this apparently exists in nature. It probably exists in the atmosphere or something, and it 
it forms when UV light, UV energy strikes these atoms in, in a strange combination and they form this. Actually, I'm not sure. I've never heard of this molecule before, but uh, when you need to draw the Lewis structure of it, this is how you do it. Okay? Find the guy who has the least electronegativity of them all and steal his electron. I, when I first saw this problem on the website, I thought it was going to be like this, where the central atom takes more than eight electrons, but uh, it's not. So I need to come up with something that that, that is. Here, let me um, show you this guy. Uh, xenon trifluoride. Yeah, xenon is a noble gas. It does not do chemical bonds, but you can force it to do chemical bonds. If you expose xenon uh, to very, very high energy, I'm talking like maybe, maybe some very high voltage spark or something, or maybe even you, you shine x-rays at it or something like that, you know, some something crazy that nature just wouldn't really intend. Uh, you can make xenon difluoride. You can really do that. So I'll put the fluorines around the xenon just any which way. Here, let me just be neat about this and put them in a line. All right, and connect them together and give everybody uh, eight, just really quickly, instead of being careful about it, just give everybody eight electrons. Now, Let's see, xenon has eight valence electrons. Oh, you want to see that? Yeah. Here's, here's, here's xenon. It is at the end. It is at group 18, so it has eight valence electrons. And there are two fluorines. Fluorine has seven valence electrons each. So I should get a total of, what is this? 14 plus 8, 22 electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. I only have 20 electrons. So what do I do? Here's what you do, folks. You stick the extra electrons right there. See, I, I needed 22, but I only had 20. So how can I make this 20 into a 22? Well, I stick two electrons right there, right in the middle there. Yes, this xenon is going to have 10 valence electrons. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. But that is okay. That is okay for reasons that you will learn in the next module. Okay, we put that we we put those extra electrons in the middle. So that's how you do it, folks. This is called the um, this is called hypervalency in your textbook. Um, I think let me see what WebAssign calls it. Uh, more electrons than an octet. WebAssign calls this more electrons than an octet. So that's it. That's it for the first WebAssign. I'll do another video for the second WebAssign.